Guide to Miniatures Painting by Ken Carpenter. Morgan Fay, Deshi, Omnimac, Rams Air Cavalry, Yig, Future Savage. Covering preparation, priming, base cut, and different. There are no websites on this book. There are only phone numbers. Miniatures Hobbyists and the Guide to Miniatures Painting are trademark and copyright 1996. All the Rack Entertainment Group. All rights reserved. The Miniatures Hobbyist series will take you all the way from bare metal to competition quality figures, terrain, and dioramas. Volume 1, the Guide to Miniatures Painting provides novices and experts alike. With advice on tools of trade, as well as very some coverage on miniatures, detailing techniques used by award-winning professionals. The first independent look at the field, the Miniatures Hobbyist Series, is the perfect companion for an enthusiast. <clears throat> the Guide to Miniatures Painting 2 will cover conversions, complete detailing, and diorama building. Kind of need to find that one. And yes, in the 90s, miniatures are very much metal. This Is uh, J. Wilhelm Rel Partha from It uh, <clears throat> has been primed and maybe base coated. This book being rather old, it's not in the greatest shape. So I am trying to read it before I <laughs> go. All the best armies start with the basics. These old hobby books are just full of advertising. The books paint set. Spray primer. Spiders. September 1st, 1996. The purchase machine. Buy three, get one free. Only <coughs> miniature accessories. Hobby tools, spray primer, paint brushes, acrylic paints. Major bases, and that's it. <laughs> to look at the armory sponsor near you, call 800 Now Game. <laughs> what the hell? What the hell is that supposed to be? Dealer inquiries welcome. That is so hard to read with the dark green on the dark blue. It's like, it's like 
nearly impossible to see. <laughs> Corporate headquarters. List. Nottingham. The armory manufacturers of fine the finest hobby game supplies. <clears throat> Author Ken Carpenter, photography Don Whitmer, production Matt Starship. Editing Walt Sobzak and DJ Trundle. Publisher Alderick Hamilton. Manager used in this book include the following Citadel, Tyrion. Global Game, Storm Region, and Grenadier, Future Savage, Harlequin, Skeleton Cleaner, Heartbreaker, Twin Barracuda, Lance and Lazen, Water Elemental, Raffin, Yig, Cthulhu, Ralph Partha, Daishi Omnimac, Thunderbolt, Morgan the Fag. Ralph Partha was also kind enough to provide some quality rejects. Here's in Chapter 3 to show. Casting flaws. I don't see any flaws on this one. Paint a cool background. <clears throat> I suppose I should read the acknowledgments. The following companies have been instrumental in the production of this, the first book in the series. The author and publisher heartily recommend that you go out and spend large sums of money buying their products. <coughs> Game for a chop. Grenadier, Global Payments, Harlequin Miniatures, Heartbreaker Hobbies, Lance and Laser Mods, Ralph Partha Enterprises, Raffle Company, Raper Miniatures, Terrain Specialties, and Thunderbolt Mountain Miniatures. It's quite Quite a few companies involved in this business there. <clears throat> My thanks to John Zinser, without whom this book could not exist, for green lights and taking countless calls the last few weeks of production. Hmm, what was that? The whole gang at AEG were great, but John, the man who made things work. Even when he was roadkill. What? Roadkill. The following individuals deserve special recognition and my <clears throat> undying appreciation for their support directly or indirectly. Brian Lebrandi, Joseph D. Campbell. Mark Hall, Andrew Chernak, Brian Hitzman, Marco Picotto, Big Bob Watts, he hates that, Richard Ennis, Tim Olson, Eric Morris, and Jack Van Schaik. I've learned a lot from them, individually and collectively, and I've really enjoyed our association. I'd also like to thank Tom Fremen. For giving me a taste of the good life. And Don Whitmer. Not the photographer. For being there with his wit and camera 
no matter how irritating I might be. I also have the highest admiration for miniatures hobbyist widows, Cheryl and Maritza. Trademarks for products mentioned in this book belong to their respective owners. You probably aren't mean spirit enough to sue us, but just in case. The miniatures hobbyist the trademark of the Alderac Entertainment Group. Guide to Miniatures Painting is copyright 1996 by Ken Carpenter. Reserved. Printed in the USA by Brenner Printing. Do we still print things in this country? I don't know now. Well, they're apparently still in business, but they don't have a good uh, track record, I guess. Tools, care and cleaning, model preparation, priming, base coating, using washes, highlighting, detailing, Q&A, Appendix A, B, and C. Appendices. forward. Welcome to the Miniatures Hobbyist Series. The purpose of this series is to provide easy-to-read instructions and guidelines, giving painters, modelers, and miniatures gamers creative fodder for their own projects. Initially, the series will focus on painting, modeling, and terrain building. As time goes on, it may also include miniatures, gaming scenarios, and related topics, depending on feedback from you. By letter, apparently. The manager's hobby includes much more than painting and modeling, so the series will keep an open mind. The book you're holding is the first in the series and will cover everything you need to know as an aspiring manager's painter. Often we learn from trial and error, making many mistakes and wasting a few figures before discovering techniques that work. If we start with correct painting techniques, there will be a period of trial and error as we practice using them, but our learning curve should be shorter. Above all, I want you to remember, as you read any book in this series, that these are guidelines meant to provide techniques and suggestions, hopefully serving as a guidance to your own creativity. By no means do we expect these books to be considered the final word on painting modeling or gaming, just clay to be molded by your own imagination. Chapter one, the tools. When you're working on a project, the last thing you want to discover is that you're missing one or more tools required to finish the job. Sometimes it's just not possible to excuse yourself in the middle of something and pick up where you left off at a later time. So it is when you're painting miniatures. Acrylic paints, by far the most commonly used medium in miniature painting, are about as unforgiving as paint can get. They dry quickly and there's no solvent 
which will allow you to soften areas without destroying the surrounding areas. This being understood, you need to be prepared and well supplied before starting a painting project. I don't just like start off painting your miniature. Start on paper. Start on, on cardboard. Start on anything you got handy first. You might be wondering what tools and supplies you'll need in order to get started. The following is a list which introduces the bare essentials as well as some additional tools that you may need as your experience grows and you undertake more ambitious projects. Essentials. Hobby knife. Pro Edge and Exacto. Both make fine hobby knives in a variety of different handle and blade styles. <laughs> Guess what's in all of them boxes? <laughs> Yes, all of them. <clears throat> select whichever handle feels most comfortable to you. As for blades, number 11 and number 16 are the most commonly used. The number 11 blade has a finer point, allowing it to get into tighter places. But the fine tip also has a tendency to snap off at an opportune moment, and I picked mine up, but yeah, mine has a snapped off tip. I'll pick mine up down there. When you pick out a hobby knife, be sure to choose one that has a safety cover. Yeah, and mine won't mess it. Though it may cost a few cents more, it will likely save you a lot more, save you a lot of discomfort. Hobby knives are nearly as sharp as a razor. Yep. And the last thing you need is to reach for a tool and get a knife blade in your hand. <laughs> this is good from experience. Oh yeah, I know it. These are available at any hobby store, home center, or mail order hobby supply store. Mail order hobby supply store. Catalogs. That's how we used to do things. I remember ordering things from catalogs in the 90s. I wonder what home center is. <laughs> we went to Walmart like like a, a tiny a tiny store in the 90s. It was at the 80s. Needle files. These are small modeling files that range from four inches to seven inches long, not including a handle. These are fine or medium grit files with you. The fine needle files will leave fewer traces. A triangle flat and half round, and I've seen a bunch of those around here somewhere. So far. Probably over here. Or no, in the other one. In the other one that's behind the chessboard. There's a few traces, if any, on the subject. Thank you. A wire brush. Will prove useful for cleaning the needle files after use. Both are available at hobby stores and through mail order hobby supply sources. Mail order. I'm just still tripping down about mail order because it's from the 90s. <laughs> Primer. The surface of a miniature, either metal or plastic needs to be treated in order to ensure that your paint will adhere properly. There are numerous types of primer with different characteristics. 
primers are covered in greater detail in the priming chapter. Tweezers. Any pair of pointed tip tweezers will do. That's one really cool one over here. These are used during preparation to help clear away threads and flash, and are often required to get into tight places where flat tip tweezers can't reach. Any hobby shop or home center should carry suitable tweezers, or you can mail order them. Paints. Paints come in a variety of sizes, consistencies, brands, and colors. Some of the more recognizable brands are Fulcrum, Polyus, Ralph Martha, Armory, Liquitex, and Citadel. Of these tweezers. We're stuck. There is a whole bunch of Citadel paints that have been sitting there so long, they're all dry. <laughs> I select paints for color, but consistency is important also. If the paint is too thin, it will take multiple colors. If it's too thick, it may cover detail and ruin the figure. You really need to experiment to find what works best for you. You may discover, as did I, that you can compensate for most paint consistency problems you encounter. Paint will be discussed further in the base coat chapter. You will find acrylic paints in most hobby shops, or at supply stores, or through mail order supply. Brushes. Your ability and manager's painting often comes down to how well you get along with or understand the proper use of your brushes. Do they do what you expect them to do? And if they don't, is it your fault or the brushes? For typical 25 millimeter figures, you will initially need five or six brushes ranging in size, ranging in size from number three slash one to number two. Yeah, ooh, we have some of those old ones. Yeah, this is old. That is teeny tiny. If you paint large figures, you may want to add flat brushes, number one to number four as well. <laughs> it's important that your paint brushes have a good point so you can control where the paint goes. Using your brush with a choppy or ragged point may result in your paint ending up all over, especially when you don't want it. They have a sixth sense about that. <laughs> Other things to be concerned about are how long the paint moves along the bristles to the painting surface. 
is how the brush keeps its shape after multiple uses. Don't be intimidated by the prospect of selecting brushes. Just look for sharp points from a couple of different manufacturers and watch to see how they perform for you. When you find brushes that suit you, replace them as they wear out. Yes. Hmm. Yes, number one round. It is usually worth the additional cost to acquire high quality brushes. They tend to wear better and keep their shape longer. See chapter on care and cleaning for tips on prolonging the life of your brushes. Artist brushes are available at hobby shop, artist supply stores, and in the world. Palette. Used as a surface for mixing paints, you can get these inexpensively at any art store. They must be non-porous with plastic platinum and clean. You can even use the plastic bubbles from a whisker pack. What you use is unimportant, as long as it can be even. Could be. As long as it can either be cleaned or discarded when you're done. Or the clean water, which you will use for creating washes, rinsing brushes, spilling on your table at the least at two moments, or drinking, if you're really into stomach disorders. <laughs> This here is a special cup for cleaning brushes. Rags. These are invaluable for cleaning brushes, wiping spills, and protecting your clothes. You should use white rags where possible, but they won't stay white for long. White rags let you see if your brush is clean and how much paint is left when you're dry brushing. Additional tools. Super glue. Just about any brand will do, and there are dozens of them. Don't get one of the larger sizes. When you first start out, because you won't use very much at the time, there's a good possibility that glue will dry up or permanently block the passage. Later, when you're working on a larger models, assembling a number of figures at one time, you might want to get slightly larger containers. Protective coating. Found in brush on or spray forms, ranging from gloss to dead flat. These coats will protect your painted fingers from casual wear and the occasional soap spill. So gloss coats provide better protection from the hard, non porous coating, unfortunately. Gloss coats tend to make a figure shiny. <laughs> Flat coats look better, but they don't provide as much protection. One solution called bullet coating by some models is to use a gloss coating first, following up with a flat coat after the gloss is completely cured. And this is the best of both worlds, providing superior protection without creating a high gloss ring. However, these protective coats, especially with sprays, are expensive. 
brush on coats available from Armory or Flocal. Allow you to apply a gloss to certain details like eyes or jewelry. Apply a protective flat coat first, allowing time to cure, and then add the gloss coat for a moist or blessing effect in those areas. Pine salt. Yep, good old pine salt. If you really blow it on the figure and want to reclaim it, soak it for a while in this stuff and the acrylic paint. It will be softened enough for you to scrub it off with an old toothbrush. Soak it for a while in this stuff. <laughs> It will take several hours to do the job, so let it sit overnight. Use a glass container to soak the figure. Do not use pine salt for plastic figures, since the whole figure will dissolve. Pine salt dissolves plastic. Rawr. Now, you don't actually have to use pine salt. A number of compounds will do the same thing. You will have used acetone and a number of other unlikely cleanliness. This just happens to be my favorite. If you can survive the clean pine stench. I don't know what you're talking about. I like that smell. Epoxy. You will need a good epoxy. For filling gaps in the joints of multiple piece figures. This can be a single part substance such as squadron putty. Oh, you know, we have like a buttload of putty around here somewhere. There are two part epoxy such as A and B plumber's putty, millet putty, VP putty, or Durov Masterman ribbon epoxy. Uh, we call it JB Weld. Two part is the traditional favorite since it has fewer control problems. But sink part is useful for filler and non detailed areas. These are available almost anywhere from home centers to hobby stores to mail order. I guess home center means right now. It's Home Depot. <laughs> Sculpting tools. Yeah, those are in that caddy down there. There's actually a really cool map stuck underneath. Right, I'll drop the drift. Drifting filming. I have no idea what that's for.
Sculpting tools such as many spatulas and dental probes are helpful in sculpting epoxy into the surrounding detail, allowing you to blend joints so they are literally invisible after prime. They can also be used to sculpt backgrounds for diorama work or correct particularly bad areas of figure during preparation. These are hard to find anywhere other than mail order. Micro, pin vice, drill, and bits. Larger figures that come in multiple pieces usually require that the pieces be pinned together for added strength. The micro drill really allows you to drill wire thickness holes. Sorry. The micro drill allows you to drill wire thickness holes for this process. Small gauge steel wire can be purchased at most modeling or hobby shops. The drilling bits are sometimes available at hobby stores, but can easily be found through mail order. Drilling moto tool. Yeah, we've got a few of those around here too. For cleaning away areas of heavy flash on larger models or for working with wood bases for your competition figures, the drill tool is a quick and easy answer. They also do your nails really well if you can handle the vibrating feeling. Mm. Hundreds of bits allow you to pick the best tip for your purpose from cutting or sanding to buffing and polishing. Jewelers saw. Useful for model conversions, the jeweler's saw is about half the thickness of most razor saws and is able to make delicate curved cuts that other saws just can't handle. They are hard to find except through the other one. As your experience increases, you will find other less obvious tools to add to this list of its resin. Magnifier headset. Pin torch. Scroll saw. Etc. However, those tools were used by advanced modelers and therefore out of the scope of this book. Camera does not know what to do. The premier 25mm fantasy figure line the world has waited for. I don't want Hunter's Mirror Julie Buffet. Conjunctivist Evil Island by Julie Buffet. Is that what this is? No, this is different. Yeah, that one's a little better. Bridget of the Blade, I seem to be. Gareth Huckley, I seem to be. Reaper of the Apocalypse, Plague by Richard Kerr.
receive of the blessed mercy of the Rodolfo. Sweet Louis from Texas. Let me look at email handles. Chapter 2, Care and Clean. Now that you've spent a small fortune on painting supplies. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, quite probably. Quite probably. Yeah, I mean, just maybe. <laughs> maybe just the time. <laughs> maybe so. Yeah, just, just, just maybe. It might be helpful to know how to care for them, so you won't be replacing them any more often. Than necessary. By knowing how to care for your tools, you can extend their life and ensure the quality of their work. The most expensive and consumable tools in your collection are the paints and brushes. Unless you're independently wealthy or bent on financial ruin, you'll want to take good care of them. Paints. When you open a bottle of paint, either it's brand new or has been put, or has been on your painting table for a while, check to make sure the paint isn't too thick or beginning to dry. If it is, add a few drops of water and mix it thoroughly. Floquil advises acrylic paint users to add a drop of liquid detergent, liquid detergent to help keep the paint from crawling, drying along the wall of the bottle and lid. So what? Don de Shop. When opening an older bottle of paint, you may notice a dry ring around the edge of the bottle or drying chunks in the lid. If so, use your tweezers to remove the dried paint. If these dry areas remain, they may sometimes break apart and end up in the paint. Soon you start finding sand sized chunks. In your paint and on your figures. You should replace any paint that reaches this point. It's using it does more harm than good. Before using a paint, you should make sure that it's mixed thoroughly. This is often done by hand. Shaking the bottle for a while until you're confident that the paint is mixed. There are a few mechanical aids. However, that can save wear and tear on your wrists, namely paint shakers and paint stirrers. In addition, there's always the trusty stir stick, such as a popsicle or cocktail stick. Paint shakers for modelers, at least those which I have known with it, are comprised of a motor housed in a small platform from which rises a holding device. Paint bottles are strapped into the holder and the shaker goes to work.
paint stirs are a little more than a disc at the end of a shaft, which is in turn attached to a small motor. There are also attachments fitting the same general description for Dremel tools. Yeah, I think we have some of those. Time. The disc spins at high speed, helping to break up and distribute pigments evenly throughout the mixture. These can even reclaim older or lumpy paints on occasion. If using a paint stirrer like this, be careful not to let the disc get too close to the top of the paint bottle or it will splatter paint all over you and everything within arm's reach. Again, I say this from personal experience. How humiliating and destructive. When you close a bottle of paint, be sure the threads of the cap, both the cap and bottle, are clean. The paint remains on the threads, which, when you close the lid, the paint will dry and make the bottle next day impossible to reopen. This usually happens to your favorite colors. Once you have determined that the threads are clean, close the bottle as tightly as possible without the use of heavy equipment or adhesives. You want to achieve an airtight seal or come as, come as close as possible. A tight seal prevents the paint from drying between uses, which is especially important when there are long stretches of time between the paint sessions. Brushes should be stored bristles up. Bristles up. There are numerous brush holders available at Artist Supply Stores, but a tall cup will do just fine. This helps the brushes to preserve their shape. Before putting paint on your brush, it's best to dampen it a little. Dip the brush in your rinse water and then wipe it off. The bristles will remain damp enough that the paint doesn't immediately thicken on contact with the brush. A completely dry brush will pull some dampness from the paint, leaving it a little thicker and restricting flow. This is very true. This is especially noticeable during detail work. Absolutely, that is a, a major annoyance. And yes, dampen the bristles first. That will help. When loading your brush with paint, do not dip the brush directly into the paint bottle. Don't do it. Just, just don't do it. Use the bottle lid, or preferably a palette for loading paint onto the brush. However you load the paint onto the brush, do not let the paint farther than two-thirds of the of the bristles. If paint gets up to the ferrule of the brush, the ferrule being the metal sleeve that holds the bristles. 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 It will be very difficult to remove all of the pigment. The microscopic flakes will keep paint color from the brush. The pigment will lodge between the tightly held bristles and become solid as they dry. Each time this happens, additional pigments will settle between the bristles and dry. So the bristles. 
to spread further apart until the brush is no longer useful. This happens pretty quickly if you're not careful. Only one of these brushes has ever been used. When you're done painting with a color, or if you've been working with it for a while and the paint feels thick on your brush, rinse the brush out in clean water and wipe on dry on a clean rag. Rinsing in water means more than just dipping it in. You should swish the brush briskly above the cup or hold it under running water. To wipe a brush, wipe with the green of the bristles from fair rule to tip to avoid doing damage. To the brush's shape. It's okay to use the rag to squeeze the brush as well. Rinse and wipe the brush until there is no longer any color being left on the rag, and the brush should be clean. Reshape the brush before you put it away, so it will keep its original shape longer. One sidebar here on rinsing. Never set your brush bristles down in the cup. Water or no water, the bristles will weaken at the bend, harming the shape of the brush. When cleaning the brushes at the end of a painting session, you may also want to use a light detergent, dish soap, on the brush to help clean it. I wouldn't recommend that you do this every time you clean a brush, but you may want to do it every so often. When I first started painting, an experienced painter showed me a trick to help brush to keep their shape. Washing your lips, put the brush in your mouth and pull the brush through your lips. I want to do this. Seamstresses do the same thing with thread. I was told that the saliva dries with a little body and helps the brush to keep its shape. Be sure the brush is clean before you do this, since acrylic paints aren't exactly a gourmet's delight, and they probably cause cancer in laboratory rats, but what doesn't? <laughs> Damn. Spray cans. Whether you use spray primer, spray paint, or a protective coat, there are a few tips. It will help you ensure the life of the product. The first tip is, and this is a toughie, read the directions. No, really. Studies prove that nine out of three dentists recommend that three out of five doctors suggest reading the directions to patients with fewer than five neuroses. It says neuroses. <laughs> <laughs> really, <laughs> studies prove that nine out of three dentists recommend that three out of five doctors suggest reading the directions to patients. <laughs> oh, shit, he's got some humor. Well, maybe not. But the directions will tell you at what temperature the can should be stored and how the product should be used including ventilation requirements. If you store the can in a very cold place, the pigments will clot and the nozzle will follow suit the next time you try to use it. Too hot and the can may build to a dangerous pressure. Nozzles are delicate things. 
and prone to clogging. To help prevent clogging, clear the nozzle left use by turning the can upside down and spraying until the spray is clear. You can usually hear the difference as well as see it. This method uses the spare propellant to clear out the nozzle passage. Most cans run out of paint or primer long before the propellant runs out, so don't worry about losing pressure with paint or primer. Still, you can unless you clear the nozzle for five minutes after every 20 second usage. <laughs> Other tools. When the knife blade gets dirty, dull, or broken, replace the blade. When you remove the old blade, Wrap with a masking tape or some other heavy tape before placing it in the trash. This prevents accidental injuries from the naked blade poking through the side of the trash container or falling into small hands. Knives and tweezers just need to be wiped clean with a dry rag after they get paint or glue on them. Tweezers can also be washed in dish soap once in a while if they are made of stainless steel or some other corrosion-resistant metal. Needle files will get metal fillings. Filings. Fillings? Filings. Caught in the grooves over time. In order to clear away the filings, you will need a wire brush. Use the brush to stroke along the grooves of the file until most of the shavings have come free. There are usually a few stubborn cloths that won't brush free. So take your knife and using just the tip, stroke gently along the clotted grooves. To clear the clots. All right, and we're approaching an hour. So the next one will be model preparation, chapter three. I'm really, really sleepy. And, uh, Thank you. 